Good morning, everyone. It's the 10th of October. <clears throat> Leaves are starting to change. Tuesday morning, a little bit before 8 o'clock. I overslept today. I was planning on getting up at 5.30. <laughs> and it was after 7 before I got up. It was ordained before the foundation of the world that I sleep in this morning. <clears throat> you say you're not taking responsibility for your lackadaisical behavior, Larry. <laughs> well, you know, we're ready for the 23rd chapter of Luke. And the thing that comes through in this chapter is that even though Christ was through separation from his father and excruciating pain in the crucifixion he showed he still showed mercy during that time probably one of the most significant verses in this uh, chapter is the 43rd verse Jesus speaking to the thief on the cross that was on his right he said in him verily I say unto thee today shalt thou be with me in paradise now it was foreordained before the foundation of the world that this thief would ask God to remember him when he came into his kingdom but the fact that Christ showed mercy to him during this time is just and you know he showed mercy to others he said father forgive them not what they do you know so It's a remarkable account of the great that has ever made in the history of mankind. It was made on Mount Calvary. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found him, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar saying that himself is Christ a king well that was a lie because you remember Christ himself said unto Caesar the things that are Caesar and the thing and to God the things that are God and Pilate asked him saying art thou the king of the Jews and he answered and said thou sayest it in other words, he agreed with Pilate that he was the king of the Jews. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and the people, I find no fault in this man. <clears throat> and they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from ja Galilee to this place. Have you ever been accused of stirring up the people? <laughs> I'll tell you what will stir up people more than anything. Start teaching election and predestination. That'll stir them up. And when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man was a Gal or a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged into Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracles done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered them nothing, him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together for before they were at enemy between themselves. How many times has people become friends over agreeing against someone who's teaching true doctrine? The Arminians become friends together when someone comes amongst them teaching true doctrine. 
And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, and have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, not yet, Herod, for I have sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release unto them at the feast. And they cried all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. It's always amazed me how some people will choose a a very apparent false prophet and exalt him over someone who's teaching the truth. Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spake to them but they cried saying crucify him crucify him and he said unto them the third time why what evil hath he done I have found no cause of death in him I will therefore chastise him and let him go and they were instant with a loud voice requiring that he might be crucified and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Oftentimes the voices of these people that are coming against solid doctrine prevail, don't they? Because it appeals to the flesh. And the pilot gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto him, unto them, him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired, but delivered Jesus to their will. Have you ever noticed how some people get exalted in our society? The drug dealers, those that are involved in major sedition and stuff get exalted and then the Christians get uh, persecuted don't they and they led him away they laid hold on one upon one Simon a Cyrenian coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus and there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. And behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. <clears throat> For if they do these things in, gray, in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with him to be, to be put to death. But when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. You know, there's another time when they're going to be divided, one on the right hand and one on the left. The goats on the left and the sheep on the right. And one of these male factors was a sheep and one was a goat. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. So the Roman soldiers and the Romans and Pilate and the Jews were complicit in the crucifixion of Christ. They were in this crime against the Son of God together. And saying, If thou be the King of Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in a letter of Greek, letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the King of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. 
But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. But this man hath nothing, done nothing amiss. How was this revealed to this thief, that Christ was, had done nothing amiss? How was this revealed to him that he was the Son of God? Because he asked him to remember him when he came into his kingdom. How was this revealed to him? And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This male factor on the right knew that Jesus Christ was a king. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Well, that was predetermined before the foundation of the world, that this male factor that was on the right would, was one of God's little elect children. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was dark, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, and cert saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the men that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good and man and just. The same had not consented to the counsel and the deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher which was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation the Sabbath drew on and the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Well, Christ showed mercy in the time of his most suffering. That's always strike, struck me. You know, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And told the thief on the cross on the right, This day thou wilt be with me in paradise. But it was all predetermined before the foundation of the world, including the death of Christ himself. May the good Lord be with you this day.